Now will you notice verse 3. And they said unto him, Thus saith Hezekiah, This day is a day of trouble and of rebuke and blasphemy, for the children have come to the birth, and there's not strength to bring forth. It may be that the Lord thy God will hear all the words of Rabshakeh, whom the king of Assyria, his master, hath sent to reproach the living God, and will reprove the words which the Lord thy God hath heard. Wherefore, lift up thy prayer for the remnant that are left. So the servants of King Hezekiah came to Isaiah. Now, they brought this message. But he didn't say, even this man didn't say, our God. He says, thy God. Poor Hezekiah. Yes, maybe he's a half pagan, but he's got sense enough to appeal to God in a time like this. In fact, he hasn't any other place to go at this present moment. Now, verse 6, And Isaiah said unto them, Thus shall ye say to your master, Thus saith the Lord, Be not afraid of the words which thou hast heard, with which the servants of the king of Assyria have blasphemed me. Behold, I'll send a blast upon him. He shall hear a rumor and shall return to his own land, and I'll cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. Now, this, may I say, was literally fulfilled, by the way, in a most wonderful way. But notice the encouragement that Isaiah gives to the king. He said, don't worry about this man. He's not going to come into your city. He's just a blowhard. He's just boasting and blaspheming. But God has heard him. God's going to deal with him. You do not need to worry. Or if we'd only learn to let God deal with our enemies. The trouble of it is we deal with them and then we remove ourselves from the place of faith, trusting God, and then God doesn't move in our behalf. And as a result, why, we come off on the short end of a deal when if we just turn it over to the Lord, the Lord would handle it lots better than we would, as he did in this case. Now, instead, though, of something happening immediately to the king of Assyria and the Assyrian army, why, they came back. They returned and camped outside of the city of Jerusalem again. Now, notice verse 8. So Rabshakeh returned and found the king of Assyria warring against Libna, for he had heard that he was departed from Lachish. And when he heard say of Perhaka, King of Ethiopia, behold, he's come out to fight against thee. He sent messengers again unto Hezekiah. Now, here they come. They're outside the wall again. Listen to this. Thus shall ye speak to Hezekiah, king of Judah, saying, Let not thy God in whom thou trustest deceive thee, saying, Jerusalem shall not be delivered into the hand of the king of Assyria. Behold, thou hast heard what the kings of Assyria have done to all lands by destroying them utterly, and shalt thou be delivered? Have the gods of the nations delivered them, which my fathers have destroyed, as Gozan, Haran, Rezeph, and the children of Eden, which were in Thelaser? Where is the king of Hamath, and the king of Arpad, and the king of the city of Sepharvim, of Hena and Iva? Believe me, this is disturbing to Hezekiah. The king of Assyria swept everything before him. Why does Hezekiah think he will escape?